You know, one funny thing about making a dev vlog is that you have to be developing the thing you want your vlog to be about. So what do you do when uh, you want to vlog about something that's already been done? Easy man, just make it again from scratch. Hmm, <laughs> that sounds like a really bad idea. I got an idea, you make it a design retrospective. What is happening everybody, my name is Anis, welcome to The Hive, the place where we make awesome games one cell at a time. Today we're gonna talk about character, you know, thing that moves when you move the gamepad. Pretty important stuff, right? It is one of the most important things in a video game, if not the most important thing. And today we're gonna break down what goes into making a good game character, especially a good third person character. Think of games like Spider-Man. In Spider-Man you could just swing Spider-Man around New York for hours and not get bored of it. That's a very well designed movement mechanic and game character. You can also spend hours fighting just basic enemies and you would enjoy that because combat is very well designed. Think of games like God of War. No! You are not ready! Stay back! You can pretty much give me a horde mode of that game and I would spend hours and hours, tens of hours, thousands of hours playing just a horde mode of the last God of War game because combat is so well designed, it feels sticky, it feels responsive, it feels amazing. That is a very well designed game character. Platinum Games. Games. One of my favorite games of all time, Vanquish. That game doesn't have the best story, doesn't have the, be the best mechanics, doesn't have the best content. It's pretty straightforward, it's a shooter game. but. Man, that character feels good. You can spend hours sliding and just shooting in slow-mo and just exploding everyone and feeling like a real badass. That is a very well-designed game character. So what do these games have in common? What do games like Spider-Man, God of War, Vanquish and many more have in common? What makes them feel so good gamepad in hand? Well, it basically comes down to three things. The three C's. The character, the camera and the controls. First of all, the character. The 3D models have to match the fantasy you want to convey with your game. So if you uh, look for example at Spider-Man. Spider-Man is fast, he's nimble, so his 3D model is skinny and lightweight. If you look at Kratos, Kratos is heavy, very strong, his 3D model is bulky, is big. Same thing for Vanquish. Vanquish, well Vanquish you get jetpacks, it's a bit different. <laughs> but uh, same principle, the fantasy is that it is a futuristic soldier that can jetpack around the map. Well, the model conveys that. The model has an exoskeleton, which uh, pretty much says what it says. And for the character, it's also a question of animations. The animations as well have to match the fantasy you want to convey with your game. So if you look at Spider-Man, Spider-Man moves fast. You feel that he's lightweight in his animations. On the other hand, Kratos, you, he moves slowly. He's very heavy. You can feel the weight of the character in his animations. Second, the camera. Well, very important, the camera also has to support the fantasy you want to convey with your game. So if you want your game to be close and personal, well the camera will be close and personal. If you look at God of War, the camera is close behind Kratos' back and that game is close and personal. It's the relationship between Kratos and his son and the camera conveys that. Spider-Man on the other hand, the camera is a little bit far away from the character because the character is fast, he's nimble, he can jump anywhere, he can go anywhere at any time, so the camera makes sure to convey that feeling. This is for the position of the camera but it's also during gameplay, so during gameplay using the camera is something very important. So when doing certain actions in the game, framing the camera, putting the camera in a certain position will give a completely different feeling to the action you're doing. For example, look at the, the finishers in God of War. You can always see that the camera goes to a certain spot and that makes the action a lot more personal, a lot more violent and conveys the fantasy of the game. Spider-Man, on the other hand, you can see that it is the same principle but used a bit differently. You can see that when you do finishers, the camera turns around the character, does some movements so that you can feel how epic the character is and how awesome what he's doing is. And third, the controls. Well, for the controls, the more complicated your game is to control, the less badass the players will feel. If the player has to chain a lot of controls in order to achieve a certain action, well, he might not do that very often and thus not feel very good very often. So if you want the player to feel the fantasy of your game, your control have to be simple. If you look at Spider-Man, the movement mechanic is so complex when spider-man is swinging around new york it is so complex but you do it with very simple controls 
and that makes you feel like Spider-Man and that is why that movement mechanic is so good. Same thing for combating God of War. You can see that uh, most complex attacks can be done just by chaining two buttons or just pushing two buttons at the same time, which is easy for the players to do and which supports the feeling of strength and the feeling that Kratos can do crazy things anytime he wants. So controls, basically, you have to find the good balance between complexity and simple controls. You shouldn't make your controls so simple, like you shouldn't just, I don't know, hit the same button and chain combos. You, you should have a little bit of complexity so that the players feel that they are learning and that are, there's a skill ceiling, but it shouldn't be very complex so that the many many of the players will not be able to reach the fantasy that your game uh, supports so knowing this how do we design and implement a good character before we get into the details let's try to name the types of third person characters we have in video games first type is going to be fixed camera think all resident evil all god of wars those are games where you don't control the camera second type is gonna be what we have in almost all adventure and platformer games it's gonna be free character free camera the uh, the player can control the character and can control the camera the camera moves around the character it follows the character and the character moves freely compared to the camera so this is pretty much the camera we have in all platformer games we also have it in a lot of adventure games think uncharted zelda all those games they they use a free camera and a free character Man, I understand why these uh, character types and camera types don't have standard names in the game design field because they are so complicated to just describe, let alone name. Anyways, let's get back to it. Third type, it's gonna be what, what I call a strafing camera. So camera is fixed behind the back of the character. When you turn the character, the camera turns or vice versa. When you turn the camera, the character turns. This is what we're gonna have today for almost all shooters. Think Gears of War, uh, The Last of Us, those games have a strafing camera. The camera is always behind the back of the character. And today we're gonna have a lot of games that are going to mix the two last categories. So the free camera and free character when the character is just moving and exploring or platforming and then the the moment the character aims his weapon it's gonna turn into the third type of camera so the strafing camera this is what we have for games for example like uncharted so when you're exploring when you're platforming it's a free camera when the moment you start aiming it goes into a strafing camera all right now we have our three camera types defined let's get into what makes a good third person game character first of all there's no magic formula for making a game character. It will depend on your game genre, on your game's rhythm, on your game mechanics. Everything in your game is gonna affect your game character. Second, even if you know exactly what genre you have, what is the rhythm of your game, there is no recipe per se to designing a good game character. It's an iterative process. You have to do it while you're developing your game, or at least for a period when you start developing your game, you're gonna spend time tweaking and iterating on your character until you have something that feels good and that matches the idea you have for the game. And last but not least, it is something that you have to finish at a certain time. When you're developing a game, at first you're focusing on the character, then at a certain moment you have to lock that character so that you can move on and work on the other mechanics. You cannot implement what we call breaking changes to your character because those changes can break the other uh, design components in your game. For example, if you have enemies in your game and you make your character twice as fast, well, your enemies are gonna become obsolete. They're gonna become weak and you will have to change them or at least modify their behavior. So at a certain moment in the development of your game, you will have to lock your character and move on to the other mechanics and other parts of your game. All right, after all this, how do we design a good game character? Well. I have some steps that I follow when I'm designing a game character. Step number one, you choose what type of camera and character you want for your game. The type of character and camera you choose is gonna completely change the feeling of your game. Step number two, you trim down the mechanics to the bare minimum. You do not put all the mechanics you can think of in your game at first. If you are making a third person game, if you don't need a jump, don't put the jump. If you don't need a crouch, don't put a crouch because every mechanic you're gonna add is gonna add more complexity to the game and believe me, implementing the mechanic is one thing. Polishing it and finishing it is a completely other beast. Just adding a jump mechanic to your game can make your game so much more complex because the level design will have to take that into consideration. The player can jump, so can he reach places in your level design that were supposed to be unreachable? 
or if you add a crouch mechanic why do you have a crouch mechanic so you have to have like I don't know hidden passages in your level design or puzzles or something that require that mechanic otherwise it's gonna feel just there you know people are not gonna use it and you were just gonna waste time developing the mechanic and polishing it and people are not gonna use it at the end so trim down the mechanics at the bare minimum third you make a prototype with the bare minimum mechanics you play it play test it a lot you tweak it you spend a lot of time tweaking it couple days maybe even a week playing with all the values in your engine playing with the speed of the character the acceleration the deceleration the friction with the ground the friction with the air if your character has a jump mechanic and you spend some time play testing you do not just implement the mechanics and move on you play test until you feel that that prototype feels well and feels good once we have a prototype now we can get into the good stuff animations animations should match the rhythm of your game should match the genre of your game don't put a 30 seconds reload animation if your game is a fast paced bullet hell and vice versa don't put a very fast animation if your game is a story driven slow paced game so animations have to match the genre and the rhythm of your game so now that you've integrated your assets your 3d model and your animations it's time to tweak the three c's again you're going to tweak the character so tweak the model make sure that it looks good and that it plays well in your game and tweak the animations make sure that they trigger well that they blend well together and that they work well together we're going to tweak the camera again uh, after adding the animations sometime the camera will look uh, maybe a little bit closer to your character or a little bit further depending on your animations so we're going to tweak those again and controls we can tweak them again because we'll, we will have play tested a lot more while integrating the assets so we can maybe tweak the controls a little bit once you've put the animations and all that looks good you pretty much have a good character that is animated that feels good that feels well well it is 80 percent of the job done in about 20 percent of the time because the last 20 percent are going to take you 80 percent of the time believe me the 80 20 rule really applies in making a game character so the last step is going to be polishing your character add in sound cues add in particle effects add in trail effects all that that is something you should really not neglect it makes most of the feeling of your game so every little detail the footstep sounds the trail particles when you attack the particles when you move when you jump when you land the slow-mo when uh, a hit connects all that is really really important don't neglect that make a good game character by completely polishing your character spend time find the right sounds find the right particles or make them and implement them and polish your character because if your character feels good people will consume your content if your character doesn't feel good you can have as much content as you want people will just get bored and will move on to another game there is an excellent video that talks about game feel and game characters by extension it is by mark brown on game makers toolkit channel i will link it in the description i really recommend this video if you want to dive deeper into the design of game characters and the feeling of game characters it is an excellent video and it is an excellent channel uh, if you're interested in video game development and video game design you should you should subscribe to game makers toolkit link in the description so now that i described how i design and implement a third person game character let's look at a real world example by breaking down the character from my game warden's will step number one i had to choose what type of character and camera i wanted for my game my game is a third person roguelike with melee combat only so it doesn't have any shooting so i went with the second type of character a free camera and a free character the character is always facing the direction of the movement and the player has complete control over the camera step number two i trimmed down the mechanics to the bare minimum in my game you can move around and since there's a big focus on the combat you can evade there's an evade a roll mechanic that is all there's no jump there's no crouch there's no prone there's no wall running there's no climbing there's no anything because i'm a solo dev on this project it is already very complex to make a 3d game i was not going to implement anything else than the bare minimum third step i made a prototype very simple one with the uh, base unreal character and the base animations i just spend time tweaking my speed the deceleration the uh, acceleration all that the friction with the ground i spent some time tweaking it not just a couple couple days until i felt that i had something that uh, matched what i wanted step number four once i had my prototype done i moved into animations so i went on the marketplace and i spent 
days and days looking at all the animation packs looking at the youtube videos for those animation packs trying to imagine my game trying to find the animations that were going to fit with my game as you know i chose the frank climax animation packs because they were fast enough for my game because they were polished and because there were many packs and i could mix and match those animations together and since in my game i have a lot of characters and a lot of weapons that was absolutely perfect for me so i went with those and once i had my animations integrated i tweaked again the character because sometimes you can add animations and it can change a little bit the feeling of your game so once i had uh, my character animated and i tweaked it and it still felt good i moved to the last part which is polishing the character and i pretty much done all the polish of my character in the animation sequences everything that is sound and particle effects are in the animation sequences and everything that is a little bit more complex so triggering a weapon trail uh, or things like that are done in the animation montage system which i will get into more detail in a future video when i will show you how i do the combo uh, and the melee attack system for my game using animation montage so the character for my game is pretty much done but there's still a lot of polish that is going to be done i will not be changing a lot uh, the speed of the character or the main mechanics but i will be polishing it a lot and a lot more it still needs a lot of polish in terms of uh, camera movement it still needs a lot of polish in terms of sound in terms of particles all that is going to be done during the uh, development of the project every time i feel that i reached a milestone in other mechanics i will get back to the character and polish it a little bit more to give it a better feeling i am also exploring some other mechanics that might be breaking changes but uh, since i started communicating on the game i have a lot of feedback and a lot of people asked me about some some things like are you gonna have a lock-on mechanic where the character locks on an enemy i wasn't planning on having that but it's actually a good idea and i'm gonna try it out i don't know what feeling it's gonna give but if i put a lock-on mechanic in the game well the moment you lock on an enemy your character turns into a strafing character so the third type it adds a little bit more complexity since i have a lot of weapons in the game and they have different movement animations it will add a lot more complexity because today i only have one animation when the character is running because he's always facing the direction of the movement so i only have a run forward and since i'm using blend spaces today uh, the more the speed of the character increases he starts walking and then he starts running if i implement a lock-on mechanic there's like a 2d blend space that i have to implement so moving forward moving right moving left and moving back and each of them is gonna have at least two animations so walking and running animation and that for almost every weapon I have in my game. It is a lot of work, so I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna see the feeling that it gives. If it brings a very good feeling to the game, well, I will probably put in the time and do it. But uh, if it is too much work for uh, what it brings, then I will probably just uh, stick with a free character and free camera. Last but not least, when you're making a good game character, if you have a game that you play, that you like, and that you feel uh, the character matches the idea that you have for your game, don't feel ashamed to just copy what other studios have already done we have so many different games so if for example you're making a game that i don't know requires a character that is like what we have in a god of war game why not just look at how god of war implemented their character and how they polished it you're probably not going to reach the level of detail and the level of polish that you have for kratos in a god of war game but it can give you a pretty good design base to follow the closer you can get your character to that character that you copy well the better you'll be because you're not gonna copy a bad character you're gonna copy a character that you like and that people like so if you have something that feels like it well you pretty much have a good character also that's it for me guys for this video i hope you liked it this was my vlog about the character how i designed it how i implemented it if you have any feedback please comment below tell me how you design your character how you implement it do you have any specific tips any specific things you follow when uh, you do this for your uh, for your project by all means if you like the video please like it if you dislike the video you can dislike it if you want to see my future content please subscribe to the channel we will be uploading weekly videos about game dev and game design as usual my name is Anis. thank you very much for watching the video and i'll see you guys in the next one